Okay, so uh, continuing with the, the daily exercise reflection, uh, 衣食住, uh, so the third one, the places of lodging. Uh, usually, the, as part of the four requisites, it includes the um, form of transport. Okay, the form of transport. Yeah. So, I'll ask you an awkward question. Huh? Are you all happy with where you stay? Everybody happy? Uh, that's why this is this is called selection bias. Because those who would wake up at six, six plus seven to meditate, of course they're happy with where they stay. <laughs> you know, so sometimes selection bias. Yeah. When those who attend interfaith dialogue tend to be supporting interfaith. So they usually don't need to attend interfaith. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, interfaith dialogue. I, I, I kind of like just jump over because uh, talking about selection bias, right? When you have certain programs, um, usually it is for those who need those programs. Right? That means you are weak in this area, then you need those programs, right? But many times those who actually tend to join these programs are those who are already quite okay in these programs. Yeah, those who really are weak, they don't feel like they want to join the program. <laughs> yeah. But it's good. Yeah, still, it's good. Uh, you are satisfied with your house? Are you all satisfied? Are you all happy? Yeah, very good. Let me tell you all uh, an interesting... Um, uh, how should I put it? Um, so some years back, this was uh, maybe about eight years back, eight, nine years back, or maybe more, or maybe 12 years back. Uh. So um, I got to know some students through the Hard Sutra workshop uh, back, back when it was four lessons over four weekends. Yeah, the initial run of the Hard Sutra was not two hours, 10 weeks. It was uh, five hours, four weeks. <laughs> Yeah, and and every weekend I also overshot, so it becomes six hours, <laughs> four weeks. So anyway, during that period, I got to know some students quite well. And there was this couple, they would send me to Bras Basa from Koming San for the class. And the, the two of them, uh, they were they were about to get married. Yeah, then eventually, they got married, they got a house. Then at some point, um, uh, not during the workshop. Uh. Then at some point, um, they they told me that they are going to downgrade their house. Mm. And I was like, oh, why? Then they said, well, there's only two of them. And at that point in time, they were not exactly thinking about having kids yet. So a former roof flat is too big for them. So they decided to downgrade. Yeah, uh, when I heard that, I was quite happy. I was like, oh, that's good. <laughs> yeah, because usually when you hear about people um, changing houses, it's to upgrade, ma, right? Yeah, uh, to buy an exactly uh, a house that's exactly the same goods. Have you heard of people buying like from four room change to four room? Yeah, five room change to five room. Is it common? Oh, I see my sister nodding her head. Really? It's common, ah? Huh? Common, uh? People change because of location. <laughs> ah, okay. So sometimes we change due to location, right? Yeah. Uh, so they while they are satisfied with what they have, but because of location, maybe their children uh, are growing up, uh, then they want to <laughs> buy one that is near to a certain school. <clears throat> but for others, oftentimes, oftentimes it's to upgrade. Yeah. Um, of course, in some cases, there's a, such a need. Yeah, but in this case, that's, that couple student of mine, uh, I thought that was very, very good because they were in there, I think at that point in time, I was probably um, late 20s, early 30s. Yeah. And so they decided to downgrade. Mm. You know, maybe, maybe late 20s, they decided to downgrade. Yeah, and I, I commended them for that. Yeah, because there are many people who, even until now, there are still people who actually go beyond their means. You know, go beyond their means. Yeah. 
So in today's exercise, uh, reflect on the purpose and the function of the house. Yeah. What, why, what do we need the house for? Um, I have, I have um, been invited to, to students' houses for classes where the house itself, the, the driveway of the house, <laughs> yeah, listen, uh, where the driveway of the house is bigger than the floor area of my parents' house compound. <laughs> The driveway is bigger than our house, our house full land area, not the livable area. Our full land area plus the small little uh, courtyard yeah, is an apartment. Uh. So it's smaller than their driveway. <laughs> and when I went into the house, uh, it was the, 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 the front part. I, I also don't know where their living room is because when I went in, it was like a hotel lobby. And I was like, how come, how come people stay in a hotel <laughs> or something? <laughs> then, we, then we went to one of the rooms for me for the class. Uh, it was a small, small book study group. And I was like, this guy, is this a, is this a hotel or a residence? <laughs> it's like one of those meeting rooms. <laughs> like really, the, it, it's, it's very atypical. Then halfway through, I need to go to the toilet. So I, I said, let me go to the toilet. Then I went out, went to the toilet, then I got lost. <laughs> you know how you, 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 go, you go for a tour, right? Then you go to the toilet, or, or you go somewhere else. Then I go, hey, come on, hey, where, where? <laughs> and there was a water feature. Not, not those water feature where there's a frog in the water like that. that not, not water, not that type. <clears throat> it's a pond, you know. It's a square pond. It's not for swimming also. You know, this is how people tell people that they are so rich. They have a huge water feature that is probably bigger than the, 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 the living room of most of the five room flat. <laughs> so I was like, after that session, <laughs> when I met my parents, I told them, you can stop trying to get new houses really. Like. <laughs> And I'm sure that is not the max though. No. And, and this is Singapore we're talking about. Landscare Singapore. So I'm like, what is going on? <laughs> so I've been telling students, no matter how, how many rooms you have in a house, right? Each of us only need one bed. <clears throat> one room. When you close your eyes, does it matter whether you're sleeping in a big room or a small room? <laughs> you know? And let's say you have 10 rooms in your house. I don't know whether there are such a house or not. But let's say you have, a, you have 10 rooms, right? So what are you going to do? You sleep at 9, then set alarm at 10, you wake up, go to the second room. Then sleep until 11 o'clock, then wake up, go to the third room. <laughs> uh, and then you go around. And even if you do that one hour each, right? You may not finish up the, all the rooms, you know, because 10 rooms, are, if you have 10 rooms, that would be quite a torture, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, I've stayed in many different centers before. Uh, I've stayed in one which is uh, a, a, a very elongated room. And it's actually not really a room. It's a storeroom, actually. <laughs> yeah, it was a storeroom behind the, the, the altar. Yeah. So that center <clears throat> is above a shop house. So it's just one level above the shop house. Actually, no, it's two levels. So it's two levels above the shop house. So the, the main level is the second level and the main hall, then the, the altar, right? <clears throat> so there's a storeroom behind the altar. Yeah. The venerable was kind enough to offer me uh, a place to stay, residence. So I stayed there for about um, maybe three months around maybe maybe about three months two three months yeah uh yeah but it's it's also when you close your eyes to sleep it's still the same <laughs> huh? it's still the same mm. i've stayed i visited this uh forest monastery and then for some reason they <laughs> the, the guest monk decided to put me into a cave <laughs> yeah so i was quite excited oh, stay in the cave 
And then the door itself is not a, it's just a wooden plank that is hinged up into the, against the, the cave wall. And the bed itself is just uh, cut out into the, into the cave itself with, and they put wooden planks on it. And then there was candle inside. And I think maybe someone offered me a torch. And the next day, then I found that actually everybody else stayed in a kuti. <laughs> I'm like, then why do you put me? I mean, I didn't stay. But in my mind, like, if everybody in the monastery stayed in the hut, why do you put me in a cave? <laughs> but also, also stay. Yeah. You close your eyes, you don't know. I mean, that's the definition of sleep, right? You're not supposed to know what is happening anymore. So why why spend so much on the big house and all everything? <laughs> you know, it's like meditation. That's why I always cannot understand when students say, wow, this place, wow, energy very good. It's good for meditation. That means you're not meditating. <laughs> you're, you're, you're thinking about the whole hall. <laughs> if you are really meditating, at, at most maybe you can say that, yeah, your your skin, right, your bodily sensation, you can feel the difference. But even then, if you're supposed if you are really meditating, you're supposed to only observe your breath, right? your skin, your eyes, nose, tongue, body, and mind, external stimulus, you're not supposed to bother about it. Right? <laughs> so I always read my I cannot read my head around people who say that, oh <clears throat> this place, wow, oh, energy very good, like this very good. Wow. Oh, oh. No, you no matter where you are, right? Big hall, small hall. Yeah, um, forest or whatnot. You close your eyes. <laughs> You're supposed to meditate on the breath. Uh. Your breath is the same throughout. Uh. Got aircon, no aircon, still the breath. Uh. <laughs> Hot or cold, still the breath. Yeah. So anyway, <clears throat> so reflect on our place of lodging. Okay. Uh, you can extend to our mode of transport. Uh, so on one hand, um, reflect on the function, the purpose. Yeah, how we relate to it yeah, uh, in various, various ways. In another angle is to reflect on the conditions um, leading up to this. You know? um, I oftentimes look at the foreign workers and this is something that is way back. Way back. It's, not, it's not like oh, nowadays people talk about oh, we must care about foreign workers so still could try to be politically correct. <laughs> uh, I... Um, because a long time ago, when my father was still around, when I was in upper primary, lower sec, I think, my father used to take up contracts <clears throat> to do rewiring, you know, for new HDB flats, he'll do rewiring. So my mom is very cute. Holiday time, she will say, go and help your father. But actually, I'm going there to play with Stan. <laughs> I'm so young, what can I help, right? But at that age, I was like, come oh, I must go and help. Well, then I was like, one thing to to ask my father to let me drill things or hammer things that he's always like to get out here, that means the it's it's a quote for the cable. Yeah, there are different thickness, you know, uh, a, a certain thickness for lighting and a certain thickness for power plus. So during that period, I would see a lot of construction workers. Yeah. Uh, there are still construction workers around usually, you know, they're doing the cleaning up because it's not fully open yet. Man. So, it, and, and sometimes this building is up, but the other building is not up. And years later, whenever I see construction workers, I always, one day I had this thought. Because, do you know that um, sometimes, right, um, when the HDB flat and or whatever flat is to totally done up, but it's not TOP yet, right? Sometimes I, we, I would see the construction workers actually kind of stay inside. And that's the only time they get to stay in the flat that they built. You know? <laughs> yeah, and, and a part of me feels like, oh yeah, this is, you know, yeah, they built the roots that they will never use. They built the house that they will never stay in. Yeah, and similarly, those who work in um, factories, building cars, they are, these are the cars that in all likelihood they will never drive. Yeah, and meanwhile, we may, uh, I mean, granted you, you all feel satisfied, but I think there are a lot of people who 
who feel like, oh, their house is like this, their house is like that, not good enough. How come my colleague can upgrade? How come we cannot upgrade? How come my, my, my classmates, father, that they drive a car? How come I have to take a bus, school bus? You know, things like that. Yeah. That day I go to my friend's place, the house is so big, you know. I mean, by the time I, I got invited to that student's house, in fact, even when I was a kid, I, I go to, I, sometimes I go to friends' houses, right? And it's almost always bigger, nicer than my parents' house. But I've never felt anything about, bad about my parents' house. Yeah. And sometimes, sometimes my parents are always like, <sighs> like they, are, they, they feel quite um, sorry to, to not be able to provide us better. But I always tell them, no, what's so shameful about that? <laughs> we, we, uh, by the time I, I know, <clears throat> we stayed in two room, yeah, two room flat in Kalang Airport. We stayed in four room in Pale Bawe. We stayed in five room in Gilangi Central. And then finally, the, 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 the final fa family house yeah, in Gilang. Um, I, I've never felt that uh, we, they provided us less. In fact, I often tell them, if my friends or colleagues look down on us because of you all, they don't deserve to be my friend. Yeah, I, I can't care less. In fact, I, I would not even be angry. I'd be like, okay, sure. <laughs> That's your problem. That's not my problem. <laughs> yeah. So be grateful. Yeah, be grateful for the roof over the arcade. And this may sound cliche, but it is a truth, you know, it is a truth that there are still so many people out there by almost no fault of theirs in this life. Uh, I say in this, uh, I don't know about past life, okay? But they would, they sleep at night, in the middle of night, boom, <laughs> one artillery shell, yeah? And it's not always terrorists, uh. <laughs> yeah? And in fact, it's mostly not terrorists, uh. I'm not saying terrorists is good. I, I'm not saying. But there are so many reasons why people bomb each other. No? Yeah. So be grateful that we have a roof over our head. Be grateful for um, all the construction workers and also our Singapore civil engineers, right? Civil structural engineers. I have two, fr I have two friends who are in CSE. Yeah. One is my high school best friend. The other one is his wife. Yeah. And you know what he told me when I when I moved to consulting and I told him the good news, he said, Oh, then you must buy me lunch. And I said, Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. I, I'm like that. I, I I get excited to share good news with my friends. Not to boast. Uh. Yeah. Never to boast, but just <laughs> I can't contain my emotions. <laughs> I just I must show it, share the joy. So while we were having lunch at Bugis in this Japanese place, I was not a vegetarian yet. And then halfway through, he asked me, so hey, how, how much are you getting now? And at that point in time, I'm so innocent, I just, just blurred out this much, the, the amount. And then, <laughs> and then from his excitement, his face turned, and then he, he, he said, huh? me and my girlfriend, our combined pay is lower than yours. And it was a bit awkward. I was like, uh, <laughs> I don't know what to say, you know. My point is not that my pay is high. You know? my, pay, my point is the our own civil structure engineers may not be, uh, maybe entry one. Uh, I don't know about the, the later ones. Uh, yeah, maybe the later one they put up, put Louis. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, but um, developers maybe earn a lot of money, but the engineering team, they don't necessarily earn a lot of money, you know. Yeah. But that aside, yeah, gratitude, no? gratitude, yeah. Uh, Yitzuan Iwa, in, in the Buddhist tradition, we say, Yitzuan Iwa, yeah, Sing Si Nan Xiao, yeah. So Yitzuan, that means one brick, Iwa, the roof, yeah. All these are uh, offerings from uh, the 10 directions, yeah. How can we um, repay that, yeah. For you all, you all pay for it, right? So, Sufu, I pay already, ma? Mm. Yes, you all 
pay for it. Yeah, but if they don't build, we also cannot. No, no matter how much money you cannot build a house. No. Uh, so have a good day of reflection. Yeah, uh, reflecting on the place we get to stay, the transport we we have. No, uh, all the means of convenience. Okay, and if you can do this gradually over time, you won't have a if you you won't have a, a a day of misery. You won't feel like you're alone. You won't feel like oh yeah, how come my my life is so bad. I mean, yes, there are, you know, but that's another story altogether, okay? Oh, I mean, people.